very nice of all of you to come to Pite. It's uh, wonderful to see some familiar faces. I think Vishal Sahib is a big draw. So we've got people that we haven't got before. So thank you, Vishal Sahib. Uh, I don't think I need to do a lengthy introduction of Vishal Sahib. Everybody in Pakistan knows him. He's, mashallah, been everywhere, done everything and still doing things. Uh, we have a long association, go back about 40 years. Bank uh, my fund He's always been a, kya kehte, a leading light and always done some good things. And mashallah, we are looking forward to the institutional reform that he's going to do. So, uh, with that very brief introduction, because I think I want to maximize the time that Ishrat gets to speak, I'm going to ask him to come and give us a talk. What I'll say, what I just want to say is, Ishrat, sir, please tell us about the reform that you're doing. But even more importantly, I think if you can also guide us. Ke, what role has academic research played in terms of guiding policy in Pakistan? And what role do you think it should play? Have we made mistakes in the past? If we have, how can we correct them? So I think, whereas we'd be very happy to hear about the state of your reform, but we'd, since you're yourself a researcher and you've written this lovely book, Governing the Ungovernable, I think researchers could be the guide. Kare. Ke, ji, what is it that they should be do doing to catalyze good policy in Pakistan. So thank you. Aye. Thank you very much for being for inviting me here uh, to this very illustrious institution. My association with Pai goes back uh, a very long time when Pakistan was a still uh, a united country and most of the I would say cutting edge research towards the policy changes was done by PIDE. If you look at the history of PIDE, some of you were not even born at that time. The switch over from the highly import substituted inward looking strategy in Pakistan was initiated by a group of researchers led by Professor Nur Islam who was at that time the director of PIDE. And the Planning Commission which was one of the leading institutions in Asia, not only in Pakistan, was very much influenced by the findings and the research output of PIDE. Since then, a lot of water has flown down the river Indus, and I'm sorry to say that PIDE has lost its glamour and its usefulness as a policy oriented research. I personally want to place before you my own bias because as an economist we are all supposed to disclose what our priors, our beliefs and our biases are. I think you have had a comparative advantage which no other institution in Pakistan had which was the leader in policy oriented research. There are many universities in Pakistan doing academics, teaching. So you wouldn't have to lose your comparative advantage and get in an area where you didn't have the comparative advantage. So that moment, I oppose it. I was in the Senate of PIDE at that time, but that decision has cost you a great deal in both your reputation as well as your relevance and usefulness. So that is where I want this institution and we have a new Vice Chancellor who has come back after a while and we hope that he would be it to restore the glory and the eminence of this institution. Before I give you a synopsis of what 
we are doing, and I want to actually engage you in a dialogue rather than give a monologue. Let me start by saying what, as a policymaker, I see the role of pipe. You know, the academic oriented research has its own value. And that becomes the foundation upon which the applied research is based. But even the applied research has to be sold to the policymakers who want to make a decision not tomorrow, but yesterday. They are all very much tied down to make those decisions which have repercussions over the economy for a long time through intuition, through their own experience, through their own biases, because we don't have a shelf of studies, empirical work which informs those decisions. So what I would like you to do is to build the bridge between the research output and the policy makers by preparing what most of the think tanks in the U.S. do, and Nadine knows most of these think tanks, how they are useful. They bring in the research, announce it, disseminate it through the media, because today media is very, very useful and very powerful, and also the social media, and then prepares the two pages, three pages policy briefs in simple language, not in the technical language. But there the orientation should be that you do not become slave of the methodology and techniques. Unfortunately, in the name of rigor, we have become slaves that somebody in India has done a co-integration of certain levels and we repeat it for Pakistan and we do not know what the results are actually taking us to and what were the conditions in which Pakistan was operating. We just blindly copy that because it looks pretty sexy to have the econometrics done. So econometrics now is driving most of the research rather the other way around. What is the research question? And how do we find an answer to that research question? We have problems in energy. We have problems in water. We are going to have climate change. Has anybody done any work which says in 2025, when our water per capita will decline from 1,000 cubic meters per person to 700 or 800, what is it, it going to do to the problem pattern? Should we continue with uh, sugar cane, which is a highly water consumptive crop, or should we move to something else? Should we move to the drip irrigation or others? These are burning questions which you as young men and women are going to face in your lives. And we have to analyze, we have to investigate them. Similarly, whether the IPPs which have created this circular debt problem have to be replaced by a different model of energy generation and distribution to save both the pain to the consumers of the energy, the prices of energy are going up and up every time, and the middle class cannot afford to bear it, and our industries are becoming non-competitive because of the energy cost. These are the kind of questions which should be analyzed. Even if you don't have to do fancy econometrics, but if you have rigorous 
data sets, not based on secondary data, but on the primary data and the surveys you carry on, I think BITE can make a big contribution to a lot of problems that you are facing. The other point which I would like you to consider is that a lot of policies are accepted on their face value. It is the job of the researchers at PIDE and other institutions to challenge those policies because they are based on certain assumptions. Now you challenge the assumptions and then you present that these are the go going to be the outcomes if the assumptions, underlying assumptions are changed. That's the big service you can do because we take point estimates and the world is so uncertain that we really cannot have complete faith in point estimates. We have to have ranges and sensitivity analysis as to what the probability distribution is going to be to give you the mean. We don't do that in the policy making. We assume something that this is going to happen. But the researchers have to challenge that and challenge the assumptions on which the policy are based and come up with alternate solutions and alternate re recommendations. That's a big task. You have to decide whether you want to be like any other university, a department of economics, producing, you know, the students, graduates, and you want to become, once again, the primary research-oriented policy direction institution. The choice is for you to decide. And I think, as a policymaker, I feel that the great deal of birth of good researchers. So you're not producing even the first rate people, economists whom you can hire in the university or in the government. I have been on the selection committee and research committees for chief economists, for the other economic uh, profession, uh, professional jobs, and it is a pity that we cannot find people who can do these jobs. So we're not producing good economists through our teaching, and we are neglecting the policy-oriented research. So I have the bias, which I said, that we should look at the future pipe as the reservoir and the repository of policy-oriented knowledge, <coughs> which can be applied by the policy makers for taking tough decisions. So that's my advice as far as from the other side of the table is concerned. Now I'll come back to what we are doing. Um, the government has decided that one of the reasons why we haven't done so well during the last 25 years except for some periods of booms, compared to what our history of 40 years was, that our institutions have decayed. And they have become weak, and the institutions have to be reformed, and that requires not one single set of changes, but multiple sets. The first is that the entire civil service structure which fuels these institutions, which mines these institutions, have to be looked at not from the angle of cadres and non cadres but from the delivery of public services to the common citizen. So far the attempts have been or is cadre service ko bahut zyada marat mil rahi hai, isko nahi mil rahi hai. So there is a struggle within the civil service among different groups and different cadres. Our attempt is 
to make a civil service which is open, merit-based, gives equality of opportunity for all. So there are no entitlements, there are no reservations. There is no difference between the superior services and others. Every civil servant, whether he is a cadre or non cadre can aspire to reach the highest positions if they meet the intervening criteria. And that requires that you have a recruitment process which is competitive and is open to all. Then the second stage is that you must have not only the post-induction training but the training in the domain knowledge as well as in the leadership qualities, soft skills, which make you a good human being and a good administrator to deliver the services. And this will be throughout your career. Right now, only 1,600 to 2,000 cadre officers of the federal government go through this systematic recruitment and training and the promotions are linked to the 22,000 officers who are engineers, agriculturists, medical doctors, economists, accountants, scientists, they don't have either a career ladder or the training or a recruitment process which is similar to that of the cadres. So the cabinet has decided that these officers who are specialists, who are domain experts, will also be given the same opportunity for training as the others are. We have mega projects which cost billions, we have engineers, but the only knowledge is when they had graduated from an engineering university. After that, they are frozen in time. And we have to engage outside consultants, costing us billions of rupees. But we don't have in-house capacity to design or to formulate or to execute those projects or to supervise those projects. So that is the whole thrust of this. Then comes the performance management, the third part. Today the ACR system is a bargain between the supervising officer and the supervising office, the person whom you are supervising. Everybody gets outstanding reports, so there is no difference between a genuine performer who is doing a good job and compared to somebody who comes at 11 o'clock, has a few gup shop and cup of tea and telephone calls and leaves away at 2 o'clock or 2.30, he gets the same report as the other person who spends time and produces with us. So being away with this confidential report, the reports will be now objective based with key performance indicators which will be agreed between the officer and his supervisor and then it will be revisited during the middle of the year whether the objectives remain unchanged or circumstances have changed and the objectives have to be found tuned and the key performance indicators have to be adjusted accordingly. At the end of the year both of them sit down together and do a honest, candid appraisal of each other. And the officer said, you have promised me that you will provide me this kind of training, which I love, but you haven't done that. So it is not only a performance evaluation tool, but it is also a human development tool that the officers who lack certain skill sets 
they have to be trained by identifying what their weaknesses are and the supervisor has the obligation to make sure that the training is being done. So after the performance evaluation, only 20% will be given outstanding reports. We will have a what we call as the normal curve distribution. 60% will be given satisfactory and 20% will be given below average. And your annual increment will be twice as much for the outstanding average for the satisfactory and zero for the non-performers. And after three years, if the non-performers do not improve themselves, they will be given all the opportunities, then there will be a separation from the service which doesn't take place right now. The fourth element is the compensation. I'm sorry to say that that we have a very distorted compensation structure. The officers in 17 to 22 are underpaid compared to the private sector and their own skill sets, while 1 to 16 are overpaid. So a driver in the government without the overtime gets twice as much as a driver in the private sector. So what is happening? That 85% of the wage bill goes to 620,000 people who are in 1 to 16 and only 15% goes to the 29,000 who are in 17 to 22. That ratio between the officers and subordinate staff is leading to this distortion. So we are introducing e-governance. So the e-governance, all the files would be on your desktop or your laptop. There will be no need for having clerks and assistants putting up the PUCs and binding the files. All the data set will be on your website. All the rules, regulations, ordinance, manuals would be dumped on your website. And there will be forms which can be downloaded and uploaded by the individuals without interference of any human resource. So all those people who are between you and the officer, they should be eliminated. Now, we're not going to fire anybody because in these difficult economic times, we cannot afford to have that. But as people retire or resign or leave, their posts would be frozen and the savings will be used in order to increase the salaries of the 17 to 22 specialists. We cannot get the specialists at the kind of salaries we are getting. And finally is the question of retirement benefits. The growth in the pensions is now much faster than the growth in the salary increases. So the bill of pension will at some time or the other will become an explosive for the government. So we have to revise the entire pension scheme and go to the defined contribution rather than pay as you go, create a fund in which the government gives its share, its invested in long-term securities or other investments and the income from that will be used for the pension. So that is on the human resource policies of the civil service reforms. The second aspect is on the reorganizing of the federal government. And we will go to the provincial governments once there is 
a model which we have for reorganization of the federal government. Because provinces are now autonomous after the 18th Amendment. They can do what they want. So the federal government has 16 different types of organizational entities. And let me share with you that we didn't know how many organizations did exist. Some of them go back to 1948-1949 and they have outlived their utility, but they are still getting the salaries and they are getting the rental accommodation and the cars and everything. So first we had to take an inventory of all the organizations which exist and we found that there were 400 and I think 20 organizations or 410. So we decided that we will we went through each one of these organizations and we have now divided them into several categories. Yeah, 441. Out of which 43 will be privatized or transferred to Sarmaya Pakistan, which is the holding company. 14 of them will be transferred to provinces because these are provincial subjects. 8 to be liquidated or wound up. 35 to be merged. And 17 training institutes will be consolidated and restructured. So we will be left with 324 under the federal government and out of the 16 different classification we will be left with only two executive departments and autonomous bodies and 87 will be executive departments and 237 will be autonomous bodies these autonomous bodies will have their own board of governors government will be represented but the decisions will all be taken by the board which will appoint its own managing directors and they will be running their own financial and administrative routine without references or without an interference from the ministry concern which is right now happening then we have done a few mergers and abolition of the ministries and divisions we have so many scattered poverty alleviation and social protection initiatives all over the government. We have brought them together under a newly formed poverty alleviation and social protection, di protection division, which is under the Prime Minister. We have abolished the Capital Administration and Development Division. We are dividing Civil Aviation Authority into two parts, one for regulatory purposes and the other one to manage the commercial uh, parts of the civil aviation to promote the aviation industry. We are combining commerce, textile, industry divisions together. Federal Ministry of Health has just been reorganized where there are more people from the medical profession rather than journalists. It was all journalists who were manning the Federal Ministry of Health and the results you can all see. We are also reorganizing the Federal Ministry of Defense Production. So all the technologies which our defense forces have developed and very successfully, they should be used for the civilian purposes. This is a practice all over the world that DOD in the US has actually created most of the technologies through their transfer from the defense purposes for dual technology. So that's what we want uh, to do here. And as I said, e-governance and part of the digital Pakistan strategy will link all the ministries and the divisions for data for all the um, e-filing and tracking mechanisms and which I have already explained to you. And we are also establishing a full-time Secretary for Council of Common Interests because under Constitution, Council of Common Interests 
resolve the differences between the federation and the premises and the interprovincial disputes. So we felt that there must be given more attention to the Council of Common Interests. So that is what we are doing as far as the reorganization is concerned. And my third um, topic is there are some institutions of economic governance which are very critical for the economic management. And we have to look at them afresh and see how we can strengthen them in order to perform much better. So we have selected the State Bank of Pakistan, which has already gone through a lot of restructuring and it is one of the leading institutions. But we are still going to amend the law to strengthen its autonomy and mandate of the SBP so that it becomes completely autonomous and the government has very little to do as far as the operations of the SPP is concerned. In the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have a policy board which has been taken away from the Ministry of Finance and we have eminent individuals who are on the policy board and they will run the policies of the Securities and Exchange Commission and we are doing end-to-end automation of all the processes. So you don't have to go to the SECP offices or the registrar's office. Everything can be done from your desktop. In the Ministry of Finance, we have strengthened the debt management unit because that is a huge problem and we have brought in people from the private sector to head the debt management and to lend them. We are creating a treasury office an office of macroeconomic and fiscal coordination because the provincial and the federal fiscal affairs have to be managed in a very different way. And for the first time in the history of Pakistan, we have a public financial management law, which I'm glad has been approved by the parliament. This will delegate powers from the Ministry of Finance, which occupies too much powers, to the line ministries. The other institution we are working very hard and is difficult is the Federal Board of Revenue. We have the Prime Minister himself is actually very much involved in the whole restructuring and reorganization of the Federal Board of Revenue. And the end purpose is that the burden on the existing taxpayers is reduced and the people who are outside the tax net, they are brought in. So we don't have to have such high rates of income tax for salaried class or high rates of the same tax which can be reduced if instead of 2 million people in the tax net we have 4 to 5 million. So that is the whole purpose of the restructuring. In the Ministry of Planning and Development, we have plans to bring planning the mission back to its glory, although it won't be a clone of the planning commission of the previous era because things have changed. It will look at the public sector development program, but it will look more on the policy coordination between the different sectors. So for example, we have an education policy but if it doesn't synchronize with the labor policy, then that education policy is not going to do anything. So the Planning Commission will be looking at the linkages of intersectoral nature in its work. And it's going to have a monitoring and evaluation unit which will use both the digital connectivity but also physical inspection. And the public-private authority whereby a lot of projects which cannot be done by the government because of the staff, the resources, can be given to the uh, private sector in partnership. I'm also glad uh, to report that Pakistan Bureau of Statistics has been taken away from the Ministry of Finance because there were a lot of questions. People were saying that the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics is working under the thumb of the Ministry of Finance so it is now a completely independent regulatory body 
with its own governing council, and statistic division has been abolished, and the chief statistician will be the ex-official secretary of the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics, and the governing council consists of very eminent individuals, economists, institutions, demographers, and others. The other very important um, economic governance institution is the Auditor General of Pakistan. Uh, they still take pride in saying, oh, we have produced 50 paragraphs. They don't go for value for money. So we are professionalizing the Auditor General of Pakistan to bring in qualified accountants, use automation for the business processes, and to give them the resources and autonomy so that they can move away from this counting of the audit paras to actually try to detect where the systematic failures are in our processes and our controls so that we can improve that. And we have a Competition Commission of Pakistan, but all of you know that we have cartels at the same time. So if you have cartels, that means the Competition Commission is not doing its job. So we are looking at the Competition Commission as to why this is not being used so effectively, because if you have a private sector-led growth, then you must have a competitive markets. Otherwise, it is a disaster because the private monopolies and private oligopolies are worse than public monopolies. So the only thing is that we should have competition commission, which is trying to figure out where pollution is or where cartels are. So we are doing some work on the competition commission so that it has become more effective. And finally, I will be very happy to report that we have made a full transparent process where all the chief executives positions of the autonomous bodies, corporations, companies, statutory bodies has been approved by the cabinet. You have to advertise every single job, including you advertise the job of the Vice Chancellor of Pipe. Applications are invited according to the eligibility criteria. There is an independent shortlisting committee which shortlists the candidates from among the applicants. Then there is a selection committee which consists of the minister, the secretary, two independent outsiders and the secretary establishment which interviews the shortlisted candidates and a panel of three is sent to the cabinet. So the prime minister has discretionary powers to just read up somebody and say appoint him have been taken away. So it's now a very open merit based and so far 37 such appointments have been made and I'm glad to inform you that a lot of overseas Pakistanis have come and occupied those positions and their feedback was that we couldn't even imagine that sitting outside Pakistan without any safarish or without any connections we could be selected to these top positions but now we have the courage to apply because we think we have a completely open, transparent process. And if we deserve, we would be selected. So we are now attracting people from outside Pakistan who are highly qualified, who are very much skilled, and this will lead to an improvement in the quality of our institutions. Because if you pick the right person for the right job, the institutions do improve, and that's our experience. So I will stop here, and I would be very happy to listen to your views, suggestions, but please be 
more constructive. We all know what's wrong with us and we have an ability to articulate that very forcefully. But what I would benefit from this galaxy of intellectual power here is to give me some ideas, some suggestions, how we can do a better job on what we are doing for the institution reforms. Thank you very much.
So it is a gradual incremental process, but it's not, it's still not very sweeping process. And the final question is related to us. I know that, for example, the Pakistan government, I used to do some work on research, and I know that the Pakistan government hardly spent anything on research for AGC and a big budget of five million. Most ministries have no budget for research. PAD and places like this are going to really don't have any money for research. And yet policy gets made. So I wonder how this policy gets made without research. And what are we going to do about research in the system? Because I hop back to the old days when we were in the office now to rediscover that the civil service used to do a lot of research in the different ways. But now, unfortunately, I think if you guys were stuck in the office now, the civil service would not be able to fill in my shelf. Oh, yeah, you're right. But that is again a supply and demand disequilibrium. The market is not clear. When I was um, in the State Bank of Pakistan, I was just setting up my research capacity. I had only one PhD. You look, the Central Bank had only one PhD. But the grace of God, today there are 30 PhDs from best universities because we developed it. But I needed some help as far as the exchange rate policy or the monetary policy was concerned. But tell me honestly, and I had very good network uh, of the economists, I could find people who would respond on time to the questions I was asking. So that's why I started saying that, that you have to develop your reputation and your expertise. And I can assure you that the people will be chasing you, will be running after you. And they will say, let us do this. So, for example, uh, the Punjab government uh, hired economists, faculty of economics, to do their Punjab economic report, which was a policy oriented research because they felt that they can deliver that. So, the equilibrium between the supply and demand has to be established. But right now, we are suffering both on the policy side because we don't have any underlying research. At the same time, we have researchers who are not making any contribution to the policy. So we have to bring them together. It's a market failure. Thank you. Okay, folks. Let's open the discussion. Is it for lazy people? Yes. Go lazy people. Thank you for remembering that. But I'm glad you mentioned PPI. This is something nobody responsible to talk about. And supporting the citizens in some sector. Today, it's kind of a negative flow of our regulation. The provinces who have the most participation in their mouth and the development sector come together. So don't you think it requires more than effectively, it requires a proper secretariat of the government? It is secretariat, not secretariat. No, but let me compete. In my view, planning commission, which has less work than it has people now, there are 11 members doing nothing, but it has everything in the name of development there, which provinces do as legislation. So, planning commission is the natural secretary of CPI. I am not very clear as to how to do it, but I think we need some research on this and this broad organization. You know, in my view, PSPP is 10% of its work. And left to finance ministry a joint section can easily do We waste time. It should become a thick tank of the Federation of Pakistan and have these members represent the policy as it used to. So think of me, I am ready to do some work on this, but I think since you said it, nobody talks about this. You said it, 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 you said it,
ہے پیچھے سے کوئی ہاتھ روک کھڑا کرے پلیز بالکل ٹھیک ہے گڈ اور اس سے اور کوئی سر سر آپ نے بہت ساری چیزوں کو ذکر کیا سر سروسز لیول پہ آرگنائزیشن لیول پہ جو ریفارم چلتے ہیں یو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ایڈوائزرس ٹو دا منسٹر آف ہیلتھ ورک آئی ہیو اے ویری سمپل کوشچن یہ منسٹر لیول پہ ریفارمس کیوں نہیں ہو سکتے کوئی میٹرک پاس ہمارا منسٹر کیوں بن سکتا ہے آف ایجوکیشن and uh, like why why do we need an advisor and there are maybe necessary to care about the fact of an advisor of them the second thing you mentioned about the mayor thing that mayor of the CEO select the mayor what will be the qualification of that mayor a direct matric pass where in our CEO will select the mayor for different organization so then the education will be the mayor thank you لیکن جب لوگوں نے الیکٹ کر دیا ہے چاہے وہ میٹرک پاس ہو چاہے وہ میٹرک فیل ہو
while we are sitting in the sin and I belong to a political party who is in uh, power in the federation but sitting in the opposition in the province of sin we see on uh, like weekly basis on, on the assembly on the floor of the assembly concerns about the interprovincial coordination but we, when we approach the federal department federal minister of IPC they say we don't have anything left other than the hockey federation so I personally, we personally feel there uh, is a dire need of reforms in the interprovincial ministry in our federal government. Second is that with your great experience, don't you think so there should be some benchmarks to be introduced in our democratic system regarding the education and expertise of those who are coming of all the positions to govern the whole system, whether it's local government elections, whether it's provincial elections or whether it's the federal government elections. Because if our minds are not expertise clear in our minds, they are not able to do basic things, so we are also very upset at the present we have seen that the award in the institutions are sitting in the president's seat, or they are guests, and they are not able to do their own sign. This is the ground reality. So what do you think about your personal opinion? Thank you. मैंने उसका जवाब पहले दे दिया था कि आप अगर डेमोक्रेसी में वन पर्सन वन वोट में बिलीव करते हैं तो आप कोई हर्ट नहीं डाल सकते बिकॉज मुशर साहब के जमाने में हुआ था कि ग्रेजुएशन होनी चाहिए लोगों ने फेक डिग्रीज और फेक सर्टिफिकेट्स ला के इलेक्शन लड़े थे सो वी आर गेनिंग दी होल प्रोसेस सो आई डोंट थिंक दैट इज गोइंग टू हैपन दी ओनली थिंग इज दैट वी शुड इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ यू नो पीपल हु आर एजुकेटेड एंड मैं तो फेडरल कैबिनेट में भी देखता हूँ और प्रोविशनल कैबिनेट में बड़े पढ़े लिखे लोग आ रहे हैं जो कि बड़ी अच्छी अच्छी नौकरियां छोड़ के वो पॉलिटिक्स में आ रहे हैं विच इज ए गुड थिंग फॉर यंगर पीपल जो आ रहे हैं सो आई एम क्वाइट होपफुल के थिंग्स विल चेंज इंटरप्रोविशनल कोऑर्डिनेशन को ये सीसीआई का सेक्रेटरीट जो है ये इंटरप्रोविशनल कोऑर्डिनेशन को इसलिए दिया गया है कि उनके पास कोई काम नहीं था और सबसे बड़ा अहम काम जो है वो सी का काम है तो उनको ये काम दिया गया तो पी का सवाल जो है प्लानिंग के बारे में उसका क्या करता है वो अच्छा अच्छा आइडिया है हाँ वो अच्छा आइडिया है कि वो जो वर्किंग पेपर्स हैं वो तैयार करेंगे प्लानिंग कमिशन वाले आई थिंक दैट्स बात है कि और मिनिस्ट्री बनाएंगे नहीं और मिनिस्ट्री भी बनाएंगे जी अच्छा जी और बताइए एनीबडी एल्स जी वहाँ करते हैं उधर Yes, Mr. Shah, why did you call it? Why did you call it? This is our grind. This is our grind. This is my fault. 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 Sir, this is my fault. Sir, this is my fault. Sir, my question is, is there any timeline for completing this whole restructuring process or reform process? This is the fact that this is all going on. और दूसरा मैं समझता हूँ बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट ये भी मुझे इजाजत दे सवाल करने की ये डीएमजी की पावर्स किस तरह कम होगी सारी तो मिनिस्ट्री जोनी की पावर्स है सारी सेक्टर्स वहीं हैं दोनों सवाल के तुम्हारे जवाब देता हूँ हेडलाइन नहीं लगा ना ये तुम्हारे लिए है अच्छा पहला सवाल तो ये है कि मैंने अपनी � इसको मैंने ट्रेन भी किया है जब मैं स्टेट बैंक में था तो इकोनॉमिक्स ने मुझसे सीखी है गलत सीखी है वैसे शरारती इसमें तो तो तुम्हें याद होगा कि मैंने सारे पाकिस्तान जाकर मेरा इस्माइल खान से बादर तक सब को कंसल्ट करके सब ऑब्जर्व करके एक मोटी रिपोर्ट बनाई नेशनल कमिशन को कमिटमेंट and you learn from your failures. So my strategy now is that we have an incremental approach. So now I have approved the reorganization of the federal government. This is the implementation. This is the rose calm. This is the rose calm. And this is the rose calm. And this will be finished in 6 months. After that, the performance management system has been approved. It has been started. Now the minister will sign the prime minister with the performance contract. Then he will मिनिस्टर जो है अपने सेक्रेटरी के साथ करेगा तो ये सिलसिला भी शुरू हो गया है ये रोज हमारी मीटिंग्स हो रही हैं इसके ऊपर ट्रेनिंग का भी सिलसिला जो है कि जो हमारे नॉन कार्डर के एम्प्लॉयज हैं उनको हेल्थ सर्विस एकेडमी भेज रहे हैं नेशनल हाईवे एकेडमी भेज रहे हैं ओ के उसमें भेज रहे हैं दिस वॉज ऑल्सो स्टार्ट सो वी आर गोइंग वन बाई वन राधर देन हर एक को तैयार कर लो और फिर पता चले कि पांच साल या दस साल तक कोई उसकी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं होगी तो हमारा टैक्टिक ये है 
दूसरी जो तुम्हारी बात है के डीएमजी का उसका कार्टर स्ट्रेंथ हमने कम कर दिया है अभी जब अनाउंस करेंगे ना इसकी कार्टर की तो बहुत सारी पोजीशंस हमने डीएमजी से लेकर टेक्निकल ऑफिसर्स को जो एक्स कार्टर के हैं और प्रोविंशियल सर्विसेज को जो कि सब काफी पीछे हैं एज फार एज कार्टर का उनको हम ट्रांसफर करेंगे तो इसका अभी अनाउंसमेंट होगा तो तुम्हें खबर मिल जाएगी बट दिस इज द डायरेक्शन इन विच वी आर गोइंग जी <laughs> a lot of my questions are going to raise have already been raised and answered. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Uh, you clarified one question that I was going to ask, which is that it's an incremental approach at the federal level, then hopefully it will come down to the provincial level. You also answered my question about the National Commission on Command Reforms. You would name it. What were the lessons learned? Q Nehru, number eight. Number two, delivery of services ultimately happen at the local level, not just the urban level. While Shahro may not be there, it doesn't matter. Where do you have to bring major restructuring in the quality of manpower? Uh, compensations, there is a lot of fear. At least in the world, if you have to study what are the uh, motives of the LDC or one of the activities to happen is higher compensation for civil servants. Whereas the impression around the world is that we are already overpaying our civil servants co compared to what our economy is all about. Sir, uh, we have done we have done this, uh, comparison with India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and we are not overpaid at all. So the impression that you have that is not correct we are actually underpaid sir in my last job we had some turkish professors come and stay with us and uh, scientists and they were a little surprised at the salaries we pay to our professors they said it's from me too they said they really double the salaries they get mm. but that's another story mm. this is two two years old sir uh, one in, in section or one institution nobody talks about is the ministry of defense and defense production. We talked about it. No, you talked about it. You talked about it. No, you talked about it. But you talked about it. The reforms that you need to do. We are organizing it. There, then you have to bring in outsiders into defense production. It's not the job of the army to do defense production. Anywhere in the world. Legal experts are bringing in, financial experts are bringing in. They are bringing in a whole re-structure. Thank you. Look, where are the delivery services? I have partially given the answer to Nadeem's question. But in the grass root, the local government system is the model of villages and urban neighborhoods. And they will directly get money and they will be non-political and they will implement their projects. So, it will start from the grass root level. मेयर का तो मैंने ऊपर का स्तर होता है लेकिन ये तहसील काउंसिल होगी नेबरहुड काउंसिल्स होंगी विलेज काउंसिल्स होंगी ये पूरा ग्रास रूट क्यों होगा सर वन क्वेश्चन इज मिस्ड आउट हु ओन्स द मरगाला हिल्स कैन यू गेट सम लाइक सीडीए इट्स अ नेशनल पार्क इट्स अ नेशनल मॉन्यूमेंट नेशनल पार्क सीडीए के पास वी आर टोल्ड दैट द आर्मी आर्मी ओन्स इट सीडीए के पास है Let's go beyond the purview of the storm. Yes, sir. Sir, you have said that you have to do the performance segment and the first segment of the program. And the third segment of the program. So, the question is, if the first segment of the storm will be changed, then the last segment will be changed. So, in the past few years, there are three segments. So, who will be responsible for the performance segment? Who will be held responsible? Because the first segment of the storm will be held responsible. This is a very important segment. ये देखो ना आपकी बात बिल्कुल ठीक है बट उसका मैं बताना आपको भूल गया कि कैबिनेट ने सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेनियर भी अप्रूव कर दिया फेडरल सेक्टरीज के लिए कि दो साल से पहले आप किसी फेडरल सेक्टरी को चेंज नहीं कर सकते अंदर देर आर वेरी स्ट्रॉंग एविडेंस कि इनमें करप्शन हुई है या मिसयूज हुआ है अथॉरिटी का या नेपोटिज्म हुई है वो आपको लिख के देना पड़ेगा फिर आप कर सकते हैं तो ये दो साल का हो गया सिक्योरिटी टेनियर का Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> sir, I have two questions. Well, now uh, sir, I'm Dr. Faryar Mahan from STPI. I have two questions a bit different from earlier ones. Yes. Uh, number one is that what suggestions or reforms are done to institutionalize the SDGs 
since one it's one of the main items on the economic agenda. And secondly, the world is converging to uh, evidence-based policy making and reforms. Uh, uh, I, I'm asking this because you know uh, the PSTP, PC1 to PC4, they're far away from evidence-based uh, structure. And especially in a recent discussion with parliamentarians, it was clearly evident that they literally had no idea how to use their local fundings for SDG implementation. So. Again, SDGs are now part of the performance contract. So, Ministry of Education का जो performance contract है, उसमें उनके ये है कि ये आपके SDG के goals हैं, इस साल आपने ये करना है. Every ministry has to perform according to the SDGs. Parliamentarians की मुश्किल ये है कि some of them are quite new, so they don't know about the SDGs. लेकिन एक parliamentary group बना हुआ है SDGs का. वो रिवाइज करना पड़ेगा इन ऑर्डर टू ब्रिंग देम ऑन बोर्ड पिछली गवर्नमेंट ने अपने एसडीजी पार्लियामेंट्री ग्रुप को काफी एक्टिव रखा हुआ था और वो मिलते थे और समझते थे एक दूसरे से दस नो आई सी अल्टरनेटिव देन द प्यर लर्निंग अगर एक एमएनए ने अच्छा काम किया है तो उसको दूसरे से सीख सकता है बट हम अगर ब्यूरोक्रेट्स जाके बताए या टेक्नोक्रेट्स बताते हैं उसका इतना फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा जी जी कि फॉर्म इतना मेरे बारे हाउ दी सिविल सर्विस हाउस इंट्रोड्यूस भी करा दिया अपने बेगूल मालिक जी बोला ऐसे ही कि नी फॉर्म मेरे बारे हाउ दी सिविल सर्विस हाउस हाउ दी सी योर रिफॉर्म प्रोग्राम बिकॉज़ माय फियर इस विदाउट यू नो प्रॉपर रिसेप्शन विदाउट द कल्चरल चेंज नेसेसरी who has potential to recruit people who might... Uh, no, they won't. They don't have a system of recruitment. I told you that we are now a whole transparent system of recruitment. So that will apply to mayor also. It will not apply only to... Okay. The civil service, then will be welcoming these kinds of reports? Yeah. It depends on which part of the civil service you're talking about. If you are talking to an agriculture researcher from Washington State University, who is rotting in grade 17 for the last 20 years, all of them are very excited because they will have a career progression based on their performance. If an agronomist has a nice seed variety, you can sit there, but the other one is on the seniority basis, which is in the 20th grade, so all the specialists are extremely happy. Those who are going to lose their entitlement, naturally they are very unhappy. So that is how you look at it. You look, civil service is not a homogeneous organization. It consists of various different uh, parts. One part is happy, the other part is not very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have two questions. First question regarding the forms. Economy can never be in and uh, it always requires some reform. So my, my first question is from where the reform is originated, is that how we can decide that this particular reform is more better than that one. That one. And then is there any pretest before applying that particular reform? So I want to learn the process as a student. It is a political will, that's part it. If the mandate of this government in their manifesto is that they want to reform the institutions. That is what is driving mm -hmm. this whole process. Is, is, Nothing else. Is there any calculation that in, from the particular reform, who is going to take more okay, okay. You have a hit and trial. The Chinese have learned one thing, that you walk and you swim and you look at the pebbles and then go further. So this is what it is, evidence-based जो होती है वो ये होती है कि आपने कोई मूव्स किए उसका आपको फीडबैक मिला आपने करेक्शंस किए एंड देन यू मूव फ्रंट आजकल जो जो आप समझते हैं कि हर चीज जो फाइव ईयर प्लान बनाएंगे और वो उसके हो तो होगा दुनिया बदल गई है स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट तो आपको पांच मैंने बता दिए कि स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट क्या Thank you sir, very nice talk. I have two questions. You have somehow touched upon that
that while uh, mentioning to the education policy and labor force. Mm -hmm. So my question is for them that, that is there any uh, skill mapping activity going on that what we are uh, needing, uh, what Pakistan will need in the coming five, ten years. So that I just want to share one example at the School of Public Policy, we were looking for the public policy analyst or uh, professor, doctor, but we couldn't find. It. We asked HEC that they should provide us some uh, guy, nobody was there. So things are needed but they are not in the spectrum so nobody is going for that. Secondly, for the MP scales, uh, you have to design from your regular service. Uh, for a person like me, I have a 15 year service, I have to design for a two years contract in a country where there is no social protection. So don't you think that there is uh, something needed there? Do you believe in risk reward relationships or not? If you're not taking risk, you won't get the reward. So those who take the risk, they will get the reward, which is MP1. You don't want to take it? Be my guest. I have no problem with that. I'm surprised with public policy. Today, the young children I get when I was in IBM for 8 years, they said that we have to go to public policy. And I used to discourage them. I used to say that you are now young age. Get your foundations strong. Whether you do economics, whether you do sociology, whether you do political science, whether you do history, in any subject, you have to master it. Public policy is a layer on it. These American universities have started to make money to make money. That the foreign students who get scholarships, they don't get admission to economics departments and sociology departments. We have started to make money to make money to public policy. वो इंग्लैंड ने भी वो शुरू कर दिया है तो मैं तो कहता हूँ कि मैं इस सब्जेक्ट को पढ़ाने के लिए आप आप कहते हैं आप तो मिलते ही नहीं हैं लोगों को अच्छा जी क्या जी हाँ जी ये कोई कोई खातून कोई खातून बताइए अरे लड़के यार कमाल है ना वेमन यू शुड होल्ड अप योर एंड हाँ जी बताइए वो ठीक है पास रखें हाँ बोले मैं फिर का स्टूडेंट हूँ यहाँ पे इकोनॉमिक्स में पढ़ने के लिए मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि आपने रिफॉर्म्स की बात की है आप एक चीज पता ना पूछे कि राइट पर्सन फॉर द राइट जॉब स्पेशली आप इस टेक्निकल पोजीशन की बात कर रहे हैं पोस्टिंग जीपीआर हो गया ऑडिटर � Right now, all the prisoners of Pakistan are taking my literature and he is leading a prestigious organization of audit per hour. Secondly, you have to tell the civil service reform. You have to tell the civil service reform. You have to tell the civil service reform. The armed forces induction is for the basis of the people. What do you think? Similarly, the last question is, in cadre or non-cadre, you have to tell the specialists when they are there. Grade 16 or 17, you can retire from the exam. I have told you in my lecture, I didn't tell you that you are open up for them, that Carter and non-Carter should not be a difference. That's what I said here. You have not heard it. This is the reason. The quota of the armed forces is not coming from today. It is coming from before. Now, it is coming from women. It is coming from the quota of the women. It is coming from the quota of the women. It is not coming from the disabled persons. It is not coming from the armed forces. It is for everyone, and that's being, uh, you know, followed. So then, thing. Ab ye agar aapki example hai ke ye English literature wala jo hai, Walter General hai. Agar usne seekh liya hai kaam, main chemistry ka graduate tha, jab maine CSS ke imtahan diya tha. Lekin maine international relations, history of uh, Indo-Pak, uh, European history, wo sari padi. Aur uske baad phir jab main aaya, to mujhe khayal aaya ke mujhe economics nahi aati hai. So I improved. My economics. So there are a lot of people who have gone and done the training, Chevrolet pe gaye hai, Fulbright pe gaye hai, wo wapas aaye hai. So ye condemn kar dena is baat pe ke usne ek degree le di thi. We cannot differentiate on the basis of degrees. Aap agar Harvard Business School me jayein, I was surprised ke mein logon se introduction le ra tha. To ek ladka mila mujhe mene ke tumne kya kiya hai? Kehta mene music school se kiya hai. So aap usko condemn kar denge ke music school wala hai, but he was so good that he was admitted to Harvard Business School. So I don't think you should go by degrees. Correct. Okay. Achha last question, if anybody has any question. Yeah. 
बिल्कुल आपने बात सही की है लेकिन मैंने कहा ना वो छह महीने के बाद जब आपकी मीटिंग होगी आपके सुपरवाइजर से तो उसमें आपने जो चेंजेस हुई हैं आपके वर्कलोड में वो आप बता सकते हैं उसको एंड दैट कैन बी टेकन इन टू अकाउंट देखिए मुझे अब स्टेट बैंक छोड़े हुए चौदह पंद्रह साल हो गए बट ये सिस्टम अभी तक वहां चल रहा है और वहां पर जो है चालीस साल का लड़का जो है वो इस वक्त हाई पोजिशन पर बैठे हुआ है ऑन द बेस ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस एंड सैलरी भी उसको बड़ी ज्यादा मिल रही है सो वी हैव टू ब्रिंग इन मेरिट एंड परफॉर्मेंस इन आर सिविल सर्विस हमारा जो खराब हुआ है वो ये हुआ है कि हम घोड़े और गधे में कोई तमीज ही नहीं करते हैं जो काम कर रहा है उसको भी उतने पैसे मिल रहे हैं उसकी प्रमोशन भी उसी तरह हो रही है जो काम नहीं कर रहा है उसकी भी तो दिस इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू डू फाइन ट्यूनिंग करनी पड़ेगी नो सिस्टम इज परफेक्ट नो ह्यूमन सिस्टम इज परफेक्ट बट लेट्स स्टार्ट और उसमें जो खराबियां होंगी फिर दैन यू कैन फाइन ट्यून दैट यहां तो खराबी का सिस्टम चल रहा है पिछले सत्तर साल से ये ए सी आ रहा है आपको पता ही नहीं है कि आपको तो कितने नंबर दिए हैं लेकिन निगोशिएट मैं करूंगा कि जी आप मुझे अस्सी नंबर दें वरना मेरा प्रमोशन नहीं होगा ठीक है जी अब मेरा ख्याल इस वक्त करें कि अनु सवाल तो बहुत है अच्छा लेडी गो नो मैन विल बी लव टास्क इन जी Hello, sir. It's Muna, yeah. uh, and I am doing MPhil. I am in MPhil economics. Mm -hmm. So my question is bit politic, uh, political. Uh, so are you doing anything about the urban and rural domicile, which is based in Sain? Because civil servants, so when we apply, so बहुत सारे urban students ऐसे होते हैं जो discouraged होते हैं क्योंकि ये privilege होता है rural students को, and which are less competent, I think, so to the rural students. ये ये प्रॉब्लम है लेकिन आपको मैं ये बताऊं कि अर्बन की सीटें भी फिल नहीं होती हैं क्योंकि अर्बन एरियाज के बच्चों को बच्चियों को इतने अपॉर्चुनिटीज प्राइवेट सेक्टर में मिल जाती हैं देखिए मैं आईडी में आठ साल रहा हूं मैंने बड़ी कोशिश की कि जो अर्बन के स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो सी एस एस का इम्तहान दें दे रिफ्यूज टू डू दैट दे सर के जी हमने नहीं करना है हमें दूसरी जगह पर नौकरी मिलती है वहां हम अपनी परफॉर्मेंस की बेसिस पे ऊपर भी जा सकते हैं हमारी तनख्वाही भी बढ़ेंगी हमें सीनियोरिटी का कोई डर नहीं है सो दे आर सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंट सो दे डोंट वांट टू गो टू दी सेल्फ सर्विस और सर ये डिस्ट्रिक्ट सिर्फ सिंध में है बाकी तो बाकी में नहीं है अच्छा जी थैंक यू वेरी मच आई थिंक कि अब हम ऊपर चलते हैं चाय पीने के लिए पीएचडी का बेस्ट पार्ट आप देख लें और पिशर साहब थोड़ी देर के लिए होंगे हमारे साथ ये इनके सवाल जवाब आप बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं प्राइवेटली अब डिस्कशन को थोड़ा आगे ले जाए Ishwar Sir, thank you very much. I think it's been very kind of you to come to PID. Ishwar Sir, with the strong support of PID, so please give him a big round of applause. Thank you.